today we are talking about um, a lot that is happening. Today we are talking about lyrics, indexing, playlisting, and remixes. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we've had Solomon appear sign do some numbers for us before. I mean, most of the platform, he has explained why some songs aren't really recognized um, on the, like, music from the Ghanaian market are not recognized on certain platforms. Today, I want to find out, with a case study to gospel music, I want to find out how um, lyrics indexing, playlisting, and remix impacts an artist, and also a song discovery with a case study of gospel music. Yeah. All right, so I'll first um, greet your viewers. And um, first off, it's estimated that on platforms like um, Spotify, YouTube, Spotify, for example, there's about um, 60,000 songs released every day. Mm -hmm. Then on um, YouTube, there's about... 30,000 videos released yeah. every hour. Okay. Of this, about 5% are music videos. Mm -hmm. What this tells you is that um, there's a huge pool of songs released at any point in time. Yeah. And it makes it difficult for you to like come out of this if you don't really put in the work or understand the science behind this to enable you come out of the, um, the masses. All right. So um, to come back to lyrics indexing and playlisting and all, um, indexing, when we, disc uh, we, we talk about indexing with regards to internet, it basically describes how search engines are able to, um, should I say, tag or map or store mm -hmm. certain things on the internet okay. so that when people search, mm -hmm. they are able to show results faster. Okay. Um, the other day I was here and I told you that um, when you search for items on um, Google, mm -hmm. The time you are searching, that's not the time Google goes around to go and find. No. Okay. Google goes around certain times, um, at certain times that it has been programmed to do so, mm -hmm. and stores this information so that when you come and search, it's able to give you this data fast. And that is what is called indexing. Okay. Now, I'm bringing that to um, lyrics or music. Um, the question is, when we release songs, what do we do with the lyrics? Mm -hmm. Correct. Sometimes you... Um, comparing us to the Western um, part, it's easy to just search for a song and find the lyrics and sing along. Yeah. So recently, it's difficult to find some of our own lyrics online. Yeah. And, Aganian songs. Uh, yes, okay. to, until recently. And um, it plays a role when it comes to people finding your song. Mm -hmm. There's been instances where you listen to songs or you hear a song and you, you don't really know the title until Shazam came, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Um, what you do is to go and find a song with maybe a line or two that you remember. Mm -hmm. That is where lyrics indexing comes in. Okay. So if I have a song, um, let's say Bononi, and um, I don't know the title of this song, but there's a part of this song that I can remember. If this lyrics has been indexed, mm -hmm. and I go and just type that phrase or line, it goes into the search engine, goes into whichever page or website this lyrics has been and placed. Okay. Then it comes with the whole thing. At that point, I can tell who made this song. I can then go on and enjoy the song. And enjoy. Yeah, so lyrics indexing basically is allowing your lyrics to be mapped or tagged by mm -hmm. search engines so that aside people using Shazam, mm -hmm. they can also find you by just typing any phrase okay. at all in your song. Okay, Apia, let me come in. When you are uploading the song, right. is there a place that asks you to put in the lyrics? Because when you check Spotify, just as you stated, right. some gospel songs don't have their lyrics there. Mm -hmm. For me, for example, when I'm singing a song, I, I love to know what I am saying. Yeah. If you check songs like um, Joe Metal's uh, My Everything, you can get the lyrics. Mm -hmm. Even if you type My Everything or I, uh, you got, yeah. you get. Mm -hmm. But if you come to someone like... Um, uh, Empress Gifty, right? Uh, if mm -hmm. it's difficult, yeah. even Spotify, you don't get the lyrics. Right. Is it that when she was uploading the song, she omitted or ignored the section that said put in the lyrics? Okay, so two things happen. You can, there's aside you uploading the lyrics, mm -hmm. there's also something called synchronization. Okay, that is where when you are listening to the song, let's say for Spotify as an example, the lyrics goes with the song. As the song progresses, you realize that the lyrics is in sync. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you can submit 
and it can stay there. Okay. When it happens like that, the lyrics will just appear. It won't sync with the song. Then when it sync, that means they, they map the time okay. of the song okay. to the words. Okay. Then when it's progressing, these um, lyrics are displayed okay. according to where the, the, the song has played to. Now, um, yes, when submitting songs, it is not mandatory to add the lyrics. Okay. It's not mandatory. So if you feel like you want to, fine. And there are um, services that also do this. Mm -hmm. There's AZ lyrics, there's Lyrics Find, yeah. uh, Music Match. All of yeah, these guys yeah, yeah. are there to, to sort help. these things out. Yeah. Here. So um, it's just a matter of you as an artist seeing the need to mm -hmm. um, explore this part as well. Because okay. it means you are also um, allowing people to find you through that particular part. Mm -hmm. And there's another problem with us when it comes to our language mm. and the keyboard. Yeah. Now, um, you realize, let's say Odo. Mm -hmm. If we really want to spell Odo, Odo is, I, my tree is not proper, so mm -hmm. I know it's O, o D, and O, right? O yeah. If I go searching for Odo and I want to do O, D, and O, where do I find that on the, on the yeah. keyboard? <laughs> now, the second thing here is, if... Um, I'm an artist, mm -hmm. and I wrote my song in tree, and I wrote it how I'm supposed to write tree, then it becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. Because then, how do I submit these lyrics, and how do people search for me using these lyrics? Okay, yeah. so, I mean, the conversation is getting interesting, but we just um, got our next guest, who is Ninoy, who is a gospel promoter. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Alex. It's good to have you here. Good to have I mean, you've been listening to the conversation. Yeah, yeah, I've been listening. Yeah, okay. So I see uh, Uncle Fred. <laughs> you kept nodding. Like, <laughs> you kept nodding. You kept uh, nodding. I mean, I've been following what my brother is saying, mm -hmm. and I'm even mesmerized by, by his level of knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, you see, uh, uh, a lot of people are bereft of the modern kind of language that is used for music. Promote music. Mm -hmm. In fact, I mean, you are even enlightening me more. There are certain things that oh, I said okay, but when you talk of the uh, local language and the keyboard, that's where the problem comes from. Mm -hmm. So maybe what you can do is to assess the kind of keyboard that you are using mm -hmm. and then you know adjust. Yes. Okay. So if yeah. instead of using the O, you can use O, D, H. After those, when you type them, definitely you will be able to get that kind of you know you know lyrics mm -hmm. accompanying your song. Yeah. So I think we need education. Yeah. For instance, the last time that I watched him was on another platform and the education that he gave. Mm -hmm. Because as I said, most of the gospel musicians who don't have managers, mm -hmm. like Nino and other things, they are bereft of those ideas. So they need proper management and proper skills to be able to have advantage over this kind yeah. of a, a new phase of marketing music on the internet. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Nino, um, as Freddie said, do our gospel songs go through the process that uh, <laughs> Solomon is talking about? So it's, it's interesting to, to, to hear all of that. And it's interesting that you, you brought this topic really up for discussion. Because since I was said the topic, I was thinking, how, how could you really go down in detail down to this? I'm, I'm happy that this is up for discussion. Um, so from the time I was saying, I, I just have research to see how many gospel songs, even on Shazam, mm -hmm. you can view the lyrics. Mm -hmm. And um, like you're saying, how many on the search engine like Google mm -hmm. can you get their lyrics? And uh, out of the, let's say, 10 or 15 I did, I could get like two or three. Yeah. And these two or three are who we call our A-list. Mm -hmm. Like Joe, like Dinah, like Emoji. Yeah. You understand? And the rest, I don't know, like, like, like Uncle, Uncle Fred is saying, maybe they don't know. Mm -hmm. It's education. So it's, 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 a, it's a very important issue because when you look at, you don't even come to playlisting. You're yeah. just on lyrics, lyrics, lyrics index. indexing. Lyrics yeah. indexing, so When you look at lyrics index, I, I think that our people don't take it serious. Because like he's saying, you need to probably register on Lyrics Find. And Lyrics Find will distribute this to Spot, uh, Deezer, Shazam, um, some other distribution, music distribution platforms. They don't know. Mm -hmm. So maybe what they do is they go to TuneCore, distribute the song yeah. and the, no, the song goes everywhere but they don't distribute the lyrics so, I, I want to find out is it that they don't know about it or they don't employ the right yeah. people that have that kind of knowledge <laughs> yeah, because, um, it's, uh, the, 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 the other thing about that no, because, because, because the thing is that before, before you come the thing is that this is how it starts he knows how to sing he starts singing mm. he starts from the church it's a praise and worship leader. Mm. Everybody says, oh, yeah, there, oh, yeah, there. Then the pastor blesses you, go into the nations. Then the next thing is that you get a brother or a church friend mm -hmm. who is helping you do this. Yeah. Yeah. 
You understand? So that person is not a professional. Mm. So they, that's what I'm saying, they crack around on him. So at the end mm. of the day, he's not a professional. So he doesn't know lyrics in their scene, lyrics there, playlist, he doesn't mm, know yeah. all of that. <laughs> then that yeah. person will carry you through by God's mm -hmm. grace, carry you through, or do, you know, <laughs> you know, then yeah. you're, you're, you're somewhere, then yeah. they think that you are there. Yeah. They are still not learning. And, and this kind of yeah. lyrics in there has taken me back. Mm. In those days that there was, there were no computers and other mm -hmm. social media for you to assess mm. those kind of ways for you to uh, be able to sing it rightly, yeah. especially this kind of live band. I quite remember attending a, a, a concert and then let's go dancing, ooh la la. Yeah. You know, let's go dancing. The devil, devil is shining instead of the devil. Yeah, so they, yeah they, they, were, they were just listening to the records and then writing the lyrics yeah. by itself. Yeah. 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 It was, it, yeah. There were only a few people like Bob Marley and others, mm -hmm. Madonna, who introduced mm -hmm. that kind of writing the lyrics inside the music. Mm -hmm. so I, I think mm -hmm. the gospel fraternity of today should take advantage of how to market ourselves so that people can, you know, imbibe the lyrics and then be able to learn and then sing alongside. Yeah. Yes, it's it yeah. very, very, very good. Yeah. So yes. as my brother and his group can take over yeah. and then educate a lot okay. of people. Yes. Yeah. A lot of people Before are... Before we come mm. to um, playlisting, because yeah. I want us to finish with the lyrics indexing, mm. um, I want Fredima to enlighten us about their old traditional ways. How were gospel artists coming to the studio, making sure that their songs will come together what, what were the things that they were doing? As in, in creating a gospel music, what, what were the elements that you put together? Yes, to those do days, song? you know, the yeah. gospel musicians, they came as a band. Okay. Like Professor Kofi Abraham and his band. Mm -hmm. So they have various parts that they sing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the one will sing soprano, tre, uh, alto, and then tenor. Mm -hmm. But unlike these days, where one individual artist, yeah. because when I was recording Celestine, for instance, mm -hmm. Celestine will sing her lead voice and then back it herself. Okay. Yeah, so you can see that from one number, there are only two people mm -hmm. doing it. So go on with the days where one has to book a studio for mm -hmm. almost a month mm -hmm. before okay. you can even complete about three or four songs. Yeah. Because everything was done in real time. Mm -hmm. If you are supposed to sing a song of five or ten minutes mm -hmm. and the choruses appear at various, various, you know, you know points, at yeah. each point, mm -hmm. you have to sing all, all the parts, then... There was no cut and paste. But mm. these days, wow. with the era of computer, I just sing on one part mm. and then I just cut and paste them. So it's a matter of <laughs> one hour I can do. You can do song. everything. Yeah, so recording. And, and those times too, it was, mm. it was difficult to get lyrics. You, you have to either buy graphic showbiz, daily graphic, mm -hmm. especially maybe a Saturday edition. Yeah. Look at the back, the mirror. The mirror, mm. you yeah. Know, look at the back before, yeah. before yeah. we get lyrics. <laughs> lyrics. Yeah, so or you get a book. Or you buy yeah, the, the book, album yeah. yes. And you know, by God's grace, some of them will get yeah. you right. So they, mm. you, that's how you can get it. <laughs> I mean, our next guest is... <laughs> but way, you see, this, this Let topic me just you. brings us yeah. to the fact that mm -hmm. gospel, is it business mm -hmm. or a calling? Yeah. Yes, we'll come there. Yeah. But we have the man himself. He's everything in one when it comes to gospel. Yeah, he's a chairman. And that's crazy and him. Welcome to the show. And uh, it's good to have you here. Yes. It's good to have you Our here. Our Mondays are getting cool here now. <laughs> 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 but like the conversation has been going on. This morning, you are looking at lyrics indexing, playlisting, and also remixes. And Solomon has taught us a lot. And we are moving to... Playlisting. But then let me get your take on playlisting. As in, how is it important for a gospel artist to make sure that the lyrics that he or she is putting out there is able to communicate to the market? I think that, first of all, has to do particular time and seasons of a, of a release. Mm -hmm. And I've been saying that most of our artists don't have timetable for releasing of songs. And so the people, you see people releasing songs and then the songs do, are not able to make the kind of impact. Mm -hmm. And it's something that every manager, as artist manager, you must know the demographics. And I keep saying that, especially even in Ghana here, if you look at the, our award schemes, for example, there are some of the artists I find it's going to be difficult for them to win art awards. <laughs> because you see why? The time of release is very essentially mm -hmm. important yeah. to the point that before, for example, let's even say VGMA. But if you look at it, VGMA always is done in April. Their cutoff April point, May. April, May. No, April, May, yeah. Good. And their cutoff point. So if you're an artist, and you release your album, let's say, from now, 
By the time you do promotion and hit somewhere like October, November, December, your song must have gone down. And then another strong song might have come and taken you out. So before time of filing, and then we are getting to the April, and then artists, you could see that everybody is dropping songs here and there. You see, you put your name there, no, but people have even forgotten about ah, you. Yeah. So this playlisting lyrically and all this one has got lots of things to do with the artist, your composition, what you want to achieve with the particular songs. You see, unless you want to, you have the capacity to release timeless songs. We have some of the artists, they're able to release timeless songs. A song that even if yeah. you, you, you drop, no, no matter what song you, anybody would drop in December, that song still has something relevant to yeah. do with people's lives yeah. such that yeah. the song doesn't pass. And so for me, it, this whole thing has something to do with what I started with last week and saying that it has something to do with education, sensitization, for our artists to know where they are, what time they are supposed to do what. And it will come from some of the experts. Yeah. Today they are coming out. Most of them are coming out to speak. Hitherto, these informations were hidden. Before you can see any of them, get their contact to talk to them. It's difficult. Even yeah. those who do the playlist and everything, there are genuine, there are strong music people in this town. People who do place, uh, placing, mm -hmm. people who do listing, that they can tell you that if you put your song here, it will land you here. You get this, you get that. But you are, they are not even available to see them. Yeah, yeah. They become like manga jedi in their bedrooms. <laughs> you are not even seen. Always, so I'm saying that music has gone to a level yeah. where in this time era we find ourselves in, the technological aspect of promotion is huge mm. than sometimes even some of the effort we put into the song going to the studio to record. Yeah. Because to just take Nino to take a case of one hour, two hours, they're in k studio, they're recording, bam. Two, three days is done. But for that same song, which has taken like two days to record, yeah. to be able to make global impact out mm. there, it requires some two weeks intensive Somebody sitting down, putting the song into Shazam to do, to do, to do, putting all. And if you are not able, to, you don't have an expert to be able to do that. I mean, recently, me and myself and Nina were discussing it. A very loud song now doing very well in the, in the system. And we were, sitting, we were looking for the song on TikTok. It wasn't there. Which song there. is that? Uh -huh. you don't uh, say it. That was oh, on it. entertainment review. <laughs> 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 oh. You know? So, and we were, take, we were going all around. People were looking for it on TikTok. It wasn't there. You see, so this, but the main one, the person is, all, is loud, yeah. going on radio, TV and everything. Promoting, so it, promoting it and everywhere. If you're promoting it, then the song is not on TikTok, it's not everywhere. Why will people get it? You will finish it and come back to ABCD. So this is it. It's important why we need to keep some of these gentlemen yeah. mm. who have the expertise, who have the knowledge, the know-how to show the artists where some of these hidden areas, these important commercial areas are for the benefit of the artist. They need to come out and speak. Okay. They need to unfold their manga okay. system. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Solomon, uh, uh, NS has started. No, the... but let me let me come in before mm. you go mm. to him. Uh, come. Talking about mm. <laughs> talking about releasing of songs. What are some of the factors that uh, artists should look at before, let's say, okay, because of how the industry is, is flaxed, let me release this particular song. What should the artists look out for? What factors influences okay, so, releasing of songs? Okay. So, before you release a song, I keep saying that you need to know the times and seasons. And I repeat, times and seasons are very important in song releases. For example, our media, if you look at it, our media landscape that we have, you have to draw it on paper. Every artist manager, if you don't have this one, then you are not a good coach. You must have it on paper and know that at what times is politics, at what times is football. So if you, an artist goes on World Cup, and you drop a song in World Cup time, forget it. What about football, World Cup, where everybody is sitting and watching Christian Ronaldo, and you want to release? I need you, because even the TV, the media landscape, you, you go to the, so the media landscape that is supposed to give you that promotion. You go, Metro is showing live football. You go to UTV, they are showing. You go to Joy Radio, Brand. they are doing commentary. Radio, they are doing commentary. <laughs> and you say you have released a song. <laughs> where are you going to play it? Yeah. Like politics, they are doing politics. Mm. And uh, the politics, a serious time, where election, people are, time. election mm. time, where somebody has lost a general secretary position, <laughs> and then you are, <laughs> you are, 
You are releasing that song. Of what you benefit? You won't even get the space to promote it. From yeah. newspaper to everything. So sometimes the song might be good. But the time of you, the artist, the time of release got the song wrong. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yes, that's the problem. Yeah. No, no, I think uh, NS has started talking about the playlist, so yeah. you, you take it over. Okay, yeah. right. So before I even touch the playlist, in, there's another thing about the lyrics indexing that um, um, artists should pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Aside streams and shows and all of that, licensing your lyrics for synchronization also gives you money. Oh, yes. even in Ghana? Yeah. Everywhere. Like, okay, on Spotify, it will yes. get you something. Yeah, on yes, yes. Um, YouTube, it will get you yeah. something. Yes. Okay. So if, if they are licensing it mm -hmm. for synchronization, like if you are listening to songs on um, Spotify and the lyrics is moving with the song, mm -hmm. that's right. yes, all of those things, they, 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 they are paid something. Okay. Yeah, so wow. it's another avenue mm -hmm. to get some of the investment they, they put in the song. So they should take it seriously. So, so that's why I started with Lyrics okay. Fine. So we have to okay. give it to Lyrics Fine and license it there. Yeah, yeah. So when you license it on Lyrics Fine, it mm -hmm. gives it to Shazam. Mm -hmm. So as so they when use you use Shazam it, the song, mm, yeah. the lyrics will okay. be coming. Yeah. Yeah. When you are watching, mm -hmm. the artist is getting yeah, something. So as they use it. Yeah. And I like the fact that you brought this whole Shazam thing. How often does Alexia or uh, Siri mm -hmm. identif identify our gospel song or our, our high life song? Like you say, oh, Siri, play... Right. <laughs> How, like, do they identify our songs? That's I'm, so, my I'm so serious, I check the Pentecost <laughs> 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 So, um, it depends. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's been instances where you've mentioned songs um, that um, Siri has been able to play, Alexa has played. And there's been instances where you keep mentioning and it will be playing other stuff. I've seen a video, I think, um, was it? Stephanie Benson or so. Yeah. yeah. Um, she was trying to get um, Alexa or so to play a song and it was an issue. And um, some of these things, um, when if you understand, you realize it's, it's not really a big thing like that. These guys or these systems are AI modules, which means they, they, they are trained based on data and they learn at, um, on their own. Mm -hmm. Right? So if you are mentioning the song, the accent, you, yes. the person um, talking to this um, system, system also plays a role in how well this system is going to understand oh, okay. Okay. and also respond. You will have issues with your Google Assistant, your Alexa, and someone else will never have any problem. The question is, where was it built and for whom was it built for? Built for? Okay. We are now coming into this space. We are adapting some of these things. It will take a long time or a while for our data to also be um, saturated in the system such that these modules will be able to understand exactly what we say and do exactly what we want. Okay. So the songs, they can find some. They can find some, not yeah, But sometimes too, it becomes song. a challenge. Yeah, and it, be, it boils down to the accent, okay. how, how Tonation. The, the person talks and all of that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, uh, the conversation is getting interesting, but we have to go for a quick commercial break. Do stay. Welcome back and thanks for staying to your so watching entertainment TV live on Metro TV. We are live on DSTV channel 277, live on Facebook and YouTube Metro TV Ghana. Today we are talking about lyrics indexing, playlisting and remix uh, on a case study of the gospel industry. And we've already spoken about lyrics indexing. We are moving straight into playlisting. And so Solomon will tell us more about that one. Right. So playlisting, basically, um, we all do playlisting. Yeah. Like it's, it's just a matter of selecting songs you want to listen at a given point in time. Now, it's become a big thing when you do a lot of streaming, because now um, these platforms get editors who are able to sit down, research, and look for songs that are making waves in certain parts of the world and come out with a list of them. Mm -hmm. Now, a playlist or being on a playlist can make or break you. And this is why. Um, Playlists are used, sometimes used to train the systems. So let's say on Deezer, Spotify, and all of those guys. Playlisting helps them to understand and know which songs should come after which songs at yeah. which point in time. Now, if, and here is where it can break you. If you are placed 
in the wrong playlist mm -hmm. and people skip. There's this thing called skip through rate, which is measured within the first 30 seconds when a song starts playing. So when people keep skipping your songs mm -hmm. in the first 30 seconds, it means or it's assumed that they don't like the song. Now, the system now starts paying attention to two things. Which song was played before your song mm -hmm. and which song will, um, will be played after your song. If I played song A and your song came and I skipped, that means the next time, chances that after song A, your song will come has been voted down. Dropped. Yes. And the reason why I said it can make or break you is when some of these editors mm -hmm. um, don't place you at the right, um, in the right playlist. Because the assumption is that they know. They can be wrong. Because I sometimes go through some of these platforms and realize the editors are not even from here. They, 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 don't, they don't really understand how we understand our songs our and what songs, we like. Yeah. So they put, in, they put you where they feel like. They tell you, if I plug you here, sometimes it, it, it can affect your song like very, very bad. So playlisting, as I said, is just a matter of putting songs together, but they can like, play a massive yeah. role Make when it comes to... Make or break you. Yeah, yeah. how well that song performs. Hmm. Look, looking at uh, uh, Spotify... Before we started the show, I, I was trying to read more about these indexing because it's my first time hearing about it. And I, I chanced on this app that it's called Flossy. That helps. Uh, it says that it's a platform for artists focused on growth and uh, discovery. It's built for artists, labels, and managers on Spotify. So is, are there apps like that that uh, we are, maybe we are not aware of that maybe you don't, as a promoter or as an artist manager you don't really know about these things but then there's there's an app that will help you make it easy for you are there apps like that uh, there are apps like that um, aside um the one you mentioned um, i think um, my boss here mentioned um, was it no the one that they use for distributing you mentioned one Inco. correct so it helps you to just publish on multiple platforms by going through one Okay. Right, so there, there are a lot of tools that um, you have to explore and see which one works best for you. So yes, to answer your question, yeah, there, 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 are, there are a whole lot of um, tools out there. There are some promotional strategies you can also um, pick. Playlisting is not a bad thing. Like, you, you can, if you get someone to put you in the right place, or you can even create your own playlist. Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. is what, that, that is what, that's what we want yeah, so, to hear. Yeah. <laughs> no, but the disadvantage about that is that, you know, mm -hmm. like you say, if the developers or the editors of the app, for instance, let's use the, like, the more common one in Ghana, Boomplay. Mm -hmm. If the editors of Boomplay uh, put a playlist up, it, it reaches a lot of people yeah. because they are manipulating their things. Yeah. But right. if I create a playlist, maybe I'll share, to, I'll share with people, and people will share with people. I don't yeah. get that wider audience. So their editorials rather go far than... You putting together a playlist, we yeah. CNS putting together, unless probably we CNS is very popular, you know, then maybe he puts a playlist and other social media on up, uh, off up things direct people to that playlist before mm -hmm. you can see that maybe we CNS one million following on Twitter or Facebook, five hundred thousand have come to listen to his playlist mm -hmm. on Boomplay or Spotify. Okay. If not that, then the editors on Boomplay. Their playlist They'll is, just is more, put it there. Yeah, so, so some of them, some of the playlists too are generated system-wise. So mm -hmm. what people love listening to. Mm -hmm. So maybe I go to Boom Play every morning, I listen to uh, Che Man's song. I listen to it every morning. You know, maybe the, after listening to Che Man's song, they can give me another Che Man's song. Okay. Maybe I, I, I love listening to one of his songs. Mm -hmm. Then the, the Great God, maybe they will give me another of mm -hmm. his songs. Then after that, they will give me, probably he's done a song with Edu Jeff, mm -hmm. Edu Hima. Mm -hmm. They will mm -hmm. give me Edu Hima's song mm -hmm. next. Yeah. Then maybe Edu Hima has a song with Jana. Mm -hmm. They will give me Jana's song. Yeah. Then it's building. Maybe mm -hmm. Jana has a song with Joe Metal. Okay. They will give me Joe Metal's song. Then Joe Metal has a song with Akese. They will give me Akese's song. So then it's, 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 it's building up in that way. That's an auto-generated uh, Auto-generated <laughs> place. That's and, the auto. And that's <laughs> and like... Um, based on recommendations, yes. the, the system is recommending mm. songs that you may like. Yeah. And it's even dangerous. There's something called Cold State. <laughs> yeah, there's something called Cold State. Cold State is when songs are released fresh and they land on these platforms and they haven't been linked well. Okay. When I say linked, this is what I mean. Like you said, you play one song, another one comes. It's because there's something that connects them together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cold State is when a song 
has been released and it hasn't yet been able to be linked to other guys. Other guys. Okay. And this is done based on data. Like, mm -hmm. when people listen to this, what else are they yeah. listening to yeah. and all of that. Now, assuming you are crossing um, a river mm, and there are stones in the water, you want to step on them such that the, this one brings you close to the yeah, next the one, next the next one, one brings yeah. you close until you get to the end. Will you step on one that after stepping, you won't have any stone to step on? No. <laughs> Correct. This means if we submit songs and the songs are not well tagged, if after playing your song, I don't know which song to recommend to mm -hmm. my listener, mm -hmm. I will, I will, I will avoid your song. I will avoid yeah. your song. Okay. Yeah, so this also affects how popular our songs song. are on this platform. Okay, it's, so... Wait, Nana, hey, <laughs> I want to find out. Is there a way to <laughs> manipulate these things? Is there a way to do that? I'll, I'll, I'll say yes because of what I have done with playlists before. Okay. Yeah, so there are two types of playlists. The, the first one was what um, um, he mentioned, where, let's say, I'm popular, I create a playlist, I share, and people go and listen. That playlist becomes popular. Mm -hmm. It's the playlist, let's say I'm calling it top 20 of Ghana. That playlist becomes popular. Mm -hmm. yeah. The second one is a playlist that is used to make a song popular. I don't know if I'm making sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a playlist that becomes yeah. popular because mm -hmm. people go and listen yeah. to that to playlist. Yeah. And there's a playlist that makes a song popular. That's true. Because of how you have structured it. Yeah. I did this for someone on Boomplay. Um, from zero to, I think, 7,000 in a week. An underground artist. Wow. How did we do this? You see, when musicians have fan base and they don't use it, I don't understand. <laughs> and this is where... And that's where I'm coming from. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted you to finish, then I'll yeah. come to that line. That's yeah. where the problem is. If everybody is going to listen to one playlist, the playlist is popular. Mm -hmm. But if different people are creating their own playlist with a particular song, the song becomes popular. Okay. So okay. I can create my own playlist and just share that if you support my something, mm -hmm. look at these songs, go and create the same playlist. Yes. So what this means is you have a lot of playlists Having a particular song a particular running song. through it. Okay. This will make the system feel like this song is what people are looking for. Yeah. It oh. will start recommending it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ellis, before mm. you come in with the numbers bit, the person who arranges the song mm. is from Boomplay. Mm. The person is not um, an industry person. Is the person a music promoter or the person is just working with a system that is generating what people like? What is the person's expertise? It's, to it's be difficult to tell. Hey, then it yeah. will be affecting our music yeah. industry. Because sometimes I even look at playlists where the editors are, um, the playlist is maybe an Afro pop or an Afro oh, um, beat something, yeah. and the editor is uh, a foreigner. Yeah. So you ask, like, who, and, who, who, how is this yeah, person and, being uh, able to uh, get Fred, a music in, yeah. per what he's saying, it affects our industry. Yeah. Yes. yes, definitely. It's going to affect. I mean, all these are business manipulations, you know, yes. that come into play. So assuming the person sitting behind hates you, then you you expect that your music will not you know go wrong. I think there. they also listen around mm -hmm. and then see the number of feats mm -hmm. that particular songs, you know, affect to other engines. Yeah. So when they see that you know, like Camido's song, Sugar Cane is everywhere, so everybody would like to that song to that be on the place. So yeah. maybe without even researching, they can just go there, yeah. they just pick mm -hmm. it and then mm -hmm. just yeah. add add them. So yeah. if you go to all the search engines, you see that that particular song is, is, is you know, uh, uh, playing a lot. And moreover, there are other platforms that people are using. For instance, now, it has become a cliche that when you have a song and then somebody plays it on TikTok, start dancing, and then you say, is there, is there there. Yeah. And this can inform some of them, their decision when they go to work. Oh, Charlie, when yeah. I was coming, everybody was dancing to this one, so let's go and search for it. True. But, but then you start adding yeah. them. So this one, uh, in the local part, you feel better. You do the song and nobody will yeah. just try but to But in all this, the genre that suffers the most is the gospel. Yes. Yeah, 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 the gospel. It's the, the gospel genre. Gospel. Mm. The gospel has a lot of problems yeah. because of doctrinal differences. Yes. It's a problem. I think I was sitting somewhere where somebody was saying that, excuse me to say this, man, you don't, normally you don't find the SDA songs on top of the day because most of their lyrics are long. Yes. Just like telling a story. So it, it's very difficult for somebody to sit down and then just... Uh, you know, have that kind of thing in mind and then be singing them. Yeah. And a whole lot of things. But indeed, when you come to music compositions, 
they normally have almost all the parts that they use in music mm-hmm. in, in forming their diseases. So yeah. marketing also becomes a problem. a problem. Maybe they are stuck to a certain principle that they don't open up so yeah. much. Yes. Yeah, because most yeah. uh, most of the concerts and, and this thing that I have, most of them are held on Saturdays and Sundays. There may be mm-hmm. that one too, you know, that disparity too is there. So it's a whole lot of different. You see, yeah. <clears throat> And then, yeah, you know, we've not even touched uh, on the remixing. Yeah, no. we'll come there. <laughs> what? We don't even have enough. It's 350. <laughs> we'll come, it's we'll 350. Come to, we'll come to the remix. Yeah. You see, sometimes when I see uh, Solomon, Solomon when, when I see him make presentation, I, I, I say, why is Ghana music <laughs> like on top of the global? Because he's just, he's, he's a library of technology when yeah. it comes to music. Yeah. And this gentleman should be of greater impact mm-hmm. to the music industry. The music industry. industry, yeah. I mean, we don't need to... The last... This is about it. The third time I said him, we are oh, having a discussion. Yeah. Yeah. You see him like this, the next thing you see him. Like <laughs> <laughs> He's become like the mini Holy, Holy Spirit. <laughs> so I'm saying that with all this expertise, mm-hmm. he understands the system. He knows how to beat it. Yeah. If, because, you see, the truth be told. You see, like, what we used to do in Cantamanto, like, the, with the analog shop, I have, in those days, I'm a distributor. Hmm. I have my shop at the shop at Cantamanto. Every morning, so releases that comes on Friday, I brought it on Monday. And then we do poaching. So I take 25 of my new songs. I will take it to Big Ben. I'll place it at Big Ben's place. Yeah. And then I said that when I go, I'll remove one of the CD. I said, Kwame, start playing it. So that customers that are coming to Big Ben shop in the mm-hmm. morning, they'll hear of the song and then they will start buying. And from there, I'll go to Despite. I'll go to this place. Some will go to Kumasi. Within a space of time, that album, that new one is selling like 1,000, 3,000 copies is being True. sold. It's the same thing with what they are doing with this Playlist. uh, yeah. playlisting and all that. Yeah. It's a... Uh, that yeah. system, is that not yeah. what you are, yeah. you are doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, Ernest wanted to touch on the whole uh, listenership when it comes to, um, the, when you go on Spotify. Mm. People's monthly listeners yes. is lesser than their followers. So, so that's what I'm coming to. Yes. That so you ask the question, what I are have, the followers doing? I have, a pl- and I, I don't know, I knew you, rem- you listened to my uh, submission on Peace from the last time. Yeah when it, this topic came up, I said two things can be said of our artists and their following. Mm. It is either the followings are fake. Not organic. They are not organic. Organic followers. <laughs> or practically, the followers themselves who don't know the person they are following. Because, <laughs> because, uh, because how can you tell me that, and this one, when you say it, people comes up with a whole lot of uh, logarithms to describe so, so and vertices and what have you, and X, Y, Z points. I said, an artist come up and say, I have 9 million followers on Facebook. I have 10 million followers on uh, Mini Mini. Uh, Instagram. Instagram. Mm-hmm. Instagram, yeah. I have this. And yet, you can't look at my face and tell me that I put a song on Boomplay, mm. or I put a song on uh, iTunes. And I'm able to get thousand downloads. Yeah. Yeah, but you're making it this day. <laughs> no, I'm making it. This no, thing. I like why he, he's but going I, to. I, am, I, am, I love you, yes. Madam <laughs> Felady. Listen, <laughs> see, Madam Felady, it's a problem for me. Yeah. Because do you know why? Mm. Why we build fan base? Mm. We spend mm. a lot of money building fan base for yeah. them to become economic benefit, commercial to give commercial benefit to the artists. Yeah, yeah. to is their business. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> see, so the thing is that if it gets to a time. And an artist is able to put a song on iTunes, mm-hmm. Amazon, and the artist cannot direct that traffic of mm-hmm. 9 million followers. Into yeah. his account. Into his account and say, out of this my 9 million followers, mm-hmm. please go and download my new song. Mm-hmm. And out of your 9 million, you cannot even tell me that 100,000. Because mm-hmm. listen, do you know that if 100,000 of your 9 million yeah. goes to iTunes and download your song at $1, you people didn't, you didn't chop your school fees. What is the calculation? <laughs> Give it to me. How much is it? 100,000 by $1 mm-hmm. is how much? 100,000. 100,000 yeah, dollars. Instant. Dollars. Yes. So the artist, without show or no show, the artist is fine to be able to do any prom- kind yes, of promotion. Yes. But in this town, the city of Omofia, the Ghana. city of violence, <laughs> this town we are, the city of Omofia, you don't get 
Our but, artists benefiting from, from uh, what? Followers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In terms of drive, mm-hmm. in terms of that, near, the, the last time Nino said, oh, yeah, chairman, the thing there, if you have 50,000 followers and you put a song there, it is automatic you have 20,000 people mm-hmm. coming okay. to stream this. I said, agreed. Yeah. How about 1,000? <laughs> <laughs> if you can't get 20,000, uncle, how about 1,000? <laughs> Doesn't mean you can't even get 1,000. Yes. Our, our data it, is very expensive. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah. we, we really have need to, to go. But no, I want, I want so viewers to, to know how bad tomorrow. the whole following thing is, <laughs> for them to understand. Mm-hmm. If you go on Spotify, uh-huh. Empress Gifty has 177 listeners. But if you go on Instagram, she has 1 million followers. Uh-huh. If you go to Diana Hamilton, she has 34,976 Mm. on uh, Spotify. Mm-hmm. But if you go on Instagram, she has 966K. Uh-huh. If you go to someone like... 966,000. Sto- yes, yeah. almost Good. hitting a million. Good. If you go to Stoneboy, Stoneboy has six, uh, 624,217 listeners, monthly listeners. And when you come on Instagram, she has 4 million followers. Yeah. So you can imagine that who the Munka, Nino, you people didn't drop your school fees. Let's even serious. imagine that out of 4 million, I mean, we, one, out of 4 million, 500,000 people decide to go to iTunes and download Stoneboy's song for $1. We definitely you have to <laughs> come, come back to the studio again. We're going to be done with and all that. We are there correct. <laughs> no, they are not organic. <laughs> they are not organic. They are fake. We have to go. We have to go. We have to go. We have to go. Our time is out. We will continue this conversation. So we should use organic. We should use organic. I mean, we will continue this conversation. Because today we are talking about lyrics indexing, playlisting, and remix. We didn't even touch on remix. And the whole following conversation has come. But then, thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming. Yes, we had Ninoy, who is a music promoter. Solomon Apia Sign, who is a software engineer. We had Ernest. Was he Ernest? <laughs> Who is also the CEO for Media Excel Production and also a very big man, Fred Chamins. So I would really, really appreciate you for coming. It's my our name, father and our uncle. Yes, yeah. our father and our uncle. My name is Anaya Tanobach and I did this with. My name is Harriet Daddy. Up next is News Flash. Yeah, and we'll, channel. we'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow yeah. we'll continue the conversation on something else, not gospel. But we'll have to bring this topic back again. No, next this must come back. Next, next week. Next, next, next week. We'll bring it back. We'll bring it back. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>